I'm going to talk uh, to present uh, succinctly the main findings of a field research that uh, we carried on, uh, on between 2006 and 2011 in some of the poorest regions in Brazil. Uh, my colleagues uh, from the sociology faculty and I investigated some effects uh, of the social program called Bolsa Familia in following, I will say, PBF, uh, Programa Bolsa Familia. So there was uh, the effects of this program on the subjective experience and on the personality of its beneficiaries. So in the following paper, I shall first briefly present the program, then discuss and evaluate the general results of the interviews, and finally, I proceed to present what we called a phenomenology of poverty in Brazil. So, some numbers, a general introduction to the program. Uh, when Luis Inácio da Silva, that you may know as Lula, assumed the presidency of Brazil in 2002, one of the declared priorities of the government was fighting poverty, a problem that still affects a relevant percentage of the Brazilian population. Several programs were launched or extended, but none were as successful and as widely discussed and criticized as the PBF, which is at present the widest ranging social program in Brazil, serving approximately 55 million out of a general population of 200 million. Contrary to other programs that distribute directly food to poor families or other service, other goods like the electricity and so on, the PBF is a CCT, a conditional cash transfer program, distributing money instead of goods. At present, the allowance is granted to individuals or families, defined widely as a unit formed by one or two parents and their children, or by one and two grandparents and their grandchildren, or even by an aunt and an uncle and their nephews. So, to individuals or families whose per capita income is equal or less than 77 reais, approximately 17 euro per month. Brazilian average income per month in 2011, so the year in which we finished the, uh, the field research, was 783 reais, whilst the minimum wage in the same year was 678 reais, increasing to 724 in 2014. The PBF is a CCT uh, program because the participants have to meet two conditions in order not to lose the allowance. If there are children in the family, they have to go regularly to school and get regular vaccinations. And in both cases, it was quite successful since the uh, average participation of children at school is now 98.5 uh, uh, in, in Brazil. Which it, we will discuss this, the importance of children going to school. As of January 2015, so last year, the basic allowance, which is the last time that they uh, changed the, the allowance, the, the, the numbers, the basic allowance amounted to 77 reais per family, not per person. For school-aged children under 15, there is a per capita variable allowance of 35 reais for a maximum of five children. For teenagers under 19, there is a per capita variable allowance of 42 reais, 42, yes, for a maximum of two young people. In any case, a family will not receive more than five variable allowance. Therefore, the maximum allowance for a family with three children under 15 and two teenagers under 19 is 266 reais, more or less 60 euro. There are also special allowances for pregnant women and for babies under six months, but they are granted for a limited amount of time due to their very nature. When we carried out the interviews, the allowance was significantly lower and the maximum number of children was just three. So now some numbers on so general uh, numbers concerning the interviews that we carried on. All the women that we interview, 154, it was, um, we adopted a qualitative me method, not a quantitative method. So it was very long open interviews. Some of them uh, will take a whole afternoon to be carried on. So all the women that in we, in and we just used 154, actually we carried on around 300 interviews, but <coughs> we couldn't use all of them because of many reasons. We can discuss them this, uh, during the 
this, the debate or the discussion. So all the women that we interviewed claimed that the PBF had had a tremendous impact on their material life, even if a significant number of them complained about the limited amounts granted by the Bolsa. Many of them defined the allowance a help. And even if almost all of them stated that they would have preferred a regular job to the allowance. And this contradicts a widely held opinion, at least in the Brazilian public, that PBF recipients would prefer not to work in order to depend on the allowance. The preposterous nature of this claim can be countered by the fact that the minimum wage is much higher than the Bolsa, between three and nine times higher, depending on the amount of the allowance. The point is that many employers, employers would never pay the minimum wage to unqualified workers, like most of the PBF recipients. As a matter of fact, of the 154 women that we interviewed, only two admitted having given up their former job when they started receiving the allowance. Both worked as housemaids for middle class families and got a monthly salary of 150 and 200 rai respectively, so 34 and 45 rai, for working weekly six and a half days. So it was really a starving salary. Only about 10% of the women say that it made no difference whether the allowance were received by the wife, as it is the case in most, uh, most allowance. Uh, in, the allowance is granted with a card, with a tell card, and it is in the name of the woman. Um, so they say that it would make no difference whether the allowance were received by the wife rather than the husband. All others claim that women are better at spending the money wisely, knowing better what the family needs and understanding grocery prices better. Some alleged that men would use the money to drink, even if only few admitted that her husband would do this or that they actually knew of such cases among their neighbors or friends. So we were not able to ascertain whether this complaint that the men will drink uh, was well grounded and we suspect that they were just uh, reproducing a typical negative stereotype on poor people. Most of the women, so around 75%, consider that the PBF is a favor or a gift on the part of the government, or saw it as a consequence of the poor origins of President Lula himself. They felt he understood the suffering of the poor better than his predecessors. The women identified with the president, who they said was one of us, while referring to other politicians as the politicians out there. A few women claimed that the government had a duty to help the poor, and just five of them used the word right. And only two of these five had an adequate notion of the concept, whilst the other three seemed not to have very clear uh, ideas in this sense. One of them used in the same sentence the term right and the term favor. A slight majority, majority 52% uh, of the women, claimed to vote out of obligation. Voting is compulsory in Brazil since politicians are all corrupt and nothing changed anyway. These were the most common explanations. Nevertheless, almost all of them admitted having voted for Lula in the 2001 election and that his victory had changed their life. It remains unclear, however, whether and to what extent they saw a direct connection between their voting and Lula's support for governmental anti-poverty policies. They all expressed the fear that the different government would take the allowance away, but many were unsure whether the subsequent presidents will continue the program. This was before Dilma Rousseff was elected into office. Uh, the strict link between the program and Lula has been harshly criticized in Brazil, but I think quite unjustly, because um, we can discuss this also during the debate, uh, I don't see anything wrong in the fact that uh, voters elect a government who promise them to make their interest. I mean, middle class do precisely the same. It's not just uh, uh, something that you have only on the part of the poor. And uh, the most interesting uh, um, aspect uh, probably that we have is the fact that the experience of having a regular income was new for almost all of the women interviewed. And this simple fact changed their life and gave them more freedom, as they consistently reported, often without having been asked. 
When asked to specify the kind of freedom, they pointed out different features representing different fields and levels of personal autonomy, as we will see now during this phenomenology of poverty in Brazil. So I will, we will, I will discuss now these 11 points of several facets, if you want, of poverty, and then show how the PBF has had an impact in all of these fields in this subjective experience of the recipients. So the first aspect, uh, the lack of basic requirements for a healthy life. Under this heading, uh, I would like to include bad nutrition as a result both of lack of food and of, un uh, and of an unhealthy diet, precarious lodging, poor or no basic medical assistance, scarce access to medical facilities and to medication, etc. In the case of our participants, uh, uh, the difficulty of accessing health service often depended on geographical circumstances. We carried on our interview mostly in rural areas, but also on political and economical factors. Uh, bad nutrition is often caused by a lack of nutritional information. So these women and their families have a diet lacking, for instance, in, vitamin, in vitamins, uh, vegetables and fruits, or lacking of no, in, not in novel proteins, such as red meat, while feeding on edibles rich in calories, but also in fats and carbohydrates, rice, pasta, sausage. Um, however, bad nutrition is not merely due to insufficient nutritional information, let's say on ignorance. Many women we interview did in fact know that eating vegetables is important, particularly for their children. But either they were unable to find these products at an affordable price in the local commerce, particularly in, this, uh, in the semi-arid regions known as Sertão, so they have to be imported from some distant uh, region, or they were not able to grow them in gardens due to a lack of water, or because the water would have been too expensive, so the water bill would have been extremely high. So, um, in this sense, the PBF managed them to diversify quite the uh, diet of the family. Uh, so they were able for the first time to buy some vegetables, they were able to buy for the first time meat, and so on. As for the lodging, of course, the money for the PBF is insufficient, but I would like to remember that it is just one out of 59 social programs. Among them, there are programs connecting to lodging. Minha casa, minha vida, for instance, so my house, my life. And health assistance is free through Brazil, through Brazil but there are huge difference uh, uh, in the case of access according to local circumstances. So uh, sometimes we registered uh, cases in which women will use the allowance to buy remedies, to buy, uh, to buy um, remedies, and actually that should have been the case. So the second point, lack of a regular job and very irregular income. The women who interviewed, as well as their husbands, were either chronically unemployed or did very irregular occasional jobs. Most women had never worked outside of their home. Of course, we were not referring to chores uh, or activities connected to their status as wives or mothers, but to wage labor done for individuals outside the family. So they never had worked outside their home because they married and had children still very young. Sometimes they and their husband would get odd jobs on a quite regular basis, normally badly paid and physically demanding, such as working eight hours in the field for 10 reais, more or less two and a half, uh, two euro fifty. Uh, Sometimes the men had seasonal jobs in other states, for, inter for example, harvesting sugar cane. In this case, they have to leave the family for months uh, every year and then send back the money. Uh, generally speaking, these kind of jobs uh, do not, does not uh, guarantee sufficient income to support the family for the whole year. And therefore, they cast a tremendous uh, uh, uncertainty for the future of the people involved. Almost all the women that we interviewed, actually 150, expressed the desire for a regular job, officially registered with benefits and so on. Uh, most of these people, however, work autonomously. For instance, they, have, they own small plots of land or they do laundries and so on. Uh, but they often face insurmountable obstacles, such as shortage of material resources, 
bad nutrition, point one, as well as lack of technical knowledge. So the result is that their efforts are disproportionately low, the results yeah, are disproportionately low compared to the human energy that they expend working the land, for instance. So the allowance permits these people to have at least the certainty that they shall receive a fixed income every month on which they can rely for satisfying at least some of their basic needs. In this sense, it alleviates their daily routine, which, as a woman put it before receiving the grant, resembled that of animals who would spend the day roaming around for food for themselves and their children. So one of these women really told us, for the first time I feel like a person, like a human being, and not like, a, like an animal. Uh, Nota bene, this kind of unemployment is not a contingent phenomenon, it's not connected to some economical crisis, but have deep roots in Brazilian history, in Brazilian geography, and in political decisions. Nobody would open a factory in the middle of nowhere, in the Sertão, thousand miles away from the next port, for instance, uh, in a region in which you don't have skilled workers, and so on and so on. Uh, so one could claim that the allowance frees these people at least in part from the tyranny of slave labor, uh, which is imposed on them by the middle class present in the region. Uh, but on the other side, they have interiorized so much this ideology, the ideology of work in, that characterizes our society, that almost all of them feel ashamed for being unemployed. So the main reason why they want to have a job is not only because it would be safer for them, but also because they have the impression that it, there is more dignity in working than in just receiving the allowance. That, that, this was a very interesting uh, uh, thing that we register. So the third point, child labor and school living. Uh, as you may know, the poor start participating in the economic life of the family very early. So children start working very young, both at home, caring for the younger siblings or helping the mother with course, collecting firewood and so on, uh, and outside the family. This very often means that they have to leave school, perpetuating the traditional lack of literacy and make it in almost, in, almost impossible to overcome poverty through education. This phenomenon is sometimes referred to in the literature of the vicious circle of poverty. For this reason, it is very important that the PBF as a CCT program required that the children be sent regularly to school. And as I said, in this sense, it has been a success. On the other side, uh, um, the main problem is the very poor quality of public schools in Brazil. And this is a consequence of political choice made by local powers, because schools are, a municipal, uh, are administered and on municipal and state levels, not on federal levels. The fourth point, high birth rate. It is traditionally thought that poor families tend to have many children because they represent future sources of income and a possible help for parents in the old age. At the same time, however, the presence of many children increases the economic demands on the family, particularly when they are still very young and cannot work, or when the job market does not offer enough job possibilities. Our research, however, show, showed that the high birth rate, at least in the region that we visited, is not due to this quite instrumental motivation. So they don't have many children thinking of future job possibilities, but rather to a lack of information about birth control. Pregnancy occurs frequently with no formal planning, due to misinformation, to the family situation, and sometimes, in certain regions quite often, to religious faith, particularly for families who are what they call evangel evangelicals, which is not precisely the evangelical in the European sense, Lutheran, but more in the sense of the sect like you have in the US, for instance. Uh, so um, these women are part of an extremely patriarchal society, which deprives them of any control on their body. So some of the women refer to their frequent pregnancies and to the large number of children they have as presents from God. On the other hand, we met also women who had either undergone sterilization or expressed a desire to do so. So something is also changing in this sense. Uh, 
So this question of birth control is ambiguous and doesn't present any clear conclusion. In most cases, women are not able to freely choose whether they want to become pregnant or not. They are rather victims of the husbands and family, as well as the priests of the church. And this lack of freedom results in the impossibility of exercising such a buzzing function like the one to plan one's life and to be masters of one's own body. How did the allowance change this? We will discuss this when we come to point eight. The fifth uh, point is accidents. Poor are more prone to accidents due, due to the precarious nature of their lodgings and facilities. Think of unsafe electrical wiring. Due to the low quality of building materials, so generally this house, the houses where they live are built from a mixture of adobe, metal sheets, wood panels, so every, any storm can bring them to fall. And uh, um, furthermore, the roads and paths uh, uh, in the regions that we visited are not adequately maintained so that many family homes become quickly inaccessible during bad weather. In this case, the PBF cannot do much. But uh, on the other side, uh, we uh, interviewed families in which some beneficiary would use the allowance to buy motorcycles by installment, uh, which is already a sort of uh, improvement, uh, considered that many of these accidents happen are due to the fact that they are riding bicycle or they are walking uh, in, in roads uh, during the night. So the fact that they may use the money to buy motorcycles, of course no car, it, it would be too expensive, is already um, an improvement. The sixth point was the most interest, uh, interesting for our research, which was centered on the idea of autonomy, of whether they will gain autonomy through the allowance, lack of credit. Poor people do not receive credit, since they have nothing to offer as a guarantee and cannot easily find guarantors. Most Brazilian poor do not have access to bank services, and therefore to many other services for which you need a bank account. But it is not only a matter of financial credit, rather of personal reliability and trustworthiness. One of the women claimed that shop owners started selling to her on credit only when she began receiving the PBF. I quote, these persons trusted me. The Bolsa Familia card gave me credit. My card was the only thing that gave me credit in my whole life. Before, I did not, I did not have nothing. It is not enough, enough however, because I'd like to have a better life. All you want to do in life has to be got by money, by paying for it. The allowance, this is still this woman talking, does not silence those who are in need. And being in need is not only when you don't have no food, no sir. It is when you want to eat something better and you haven't got it. You can't. It is when you want to have better clothes and can't. When you want to go to the ice cream parlor with your son and can't. When you see a toy in the shop and can buy it for your child. And here she broke down and cried. So generally speaking, the women we spoke with had never had the experience of receiving a regular monetary income. And the trustworthiness they gained among the shop owners in their towns after getting the PBF was a novelty for them. They felt this as a gain in respectability and consequently as a gain of self-respect. Since being the object of mistrust, provoking them extremely negative feelings of shame and humiliation, causing personal suffering. This increase in credibility is one of the most powerful effects of the PVF on their subjective experience and seems to confirm a, a, an idea by Georg Simmel, the German sociologist and philosopher, of money as a source of freedom. So in this case, we can say that the Bolsa Familia had a side effect because this wasn't an effect that was planned when the program was introduced of giving this person more self-respect and uh, more um, um, self, a, a sense of uh, worth. Oops. Okay. So the seventh point, invisibility and silence. Uh, um, even in, even in urban areas, not only in the rural areas, uh, we, uh, 
we, uh, in which we carried on the interview, uh, the poor are often made invisible and cancelled from the landscape. Uh, they generally live far away from the better neighborhoods, in slum or at the outskirts or in segregated areas with extremely precarious infrastructures. And for this reason, their presence remains unnoticed, even more in rural areas where people live in isolated houses or in villages which are normally quite away from the main street, the main roads. However, there is another kind of invisibility and silence which is connected to the fact that nobody hears their voice. So mostly they are voiceless also on the local level. So normally they, are not, they don't have representative, political representative. Things are a little bit different in the urban area of the big cities like Rio or Sao Paulo. But in most of the places we visited, they are not organized and therefore they are not taken seriously, I would say, by their um, political representative. And of course, in this case, the PBF can't do much uh, because it is just a money allowance. So this is the point in which n neither this program nor other social programs have, to, the po to, the, to this moment, have any effect. So the eighth point, the international inequality uh, in the family, in extremely poor families, the inequality among men and women, adults and children, young and old, is often amplified. This is an inequality that you have also in normal family often, but in this case it's amplified. Uh, particularly in economically underdeveloped uh, regions of Brazil, women have uh, very few chances of emancipation from marital oppression or generally from family uh, oppression. So not only the husbands, but also the fathers or the in-laws, the brothers, the uncles, and so on. And uh, we register quite often what uh, uh, Viviana Zelizer uh, called the morality of spending. That is, poor women tend to spend the money according to a relatively rigid hierarchy of priorities, uh, with the family's basic survival at the top, followed by the needs of the children, nutrition, uh, health, school, and of the other family members according to age, with the youngest one having priority. When women admitted to having spent a couple of reais for something for themselves, like a shampoo or a body cream, uh, they often displayed a disproportionate and mostly unjustified sense of shame, since they only did this uh, once the basic family needs were satisfied, but nevertheless they feel guilty. And this is another example of how the poor frequently internalize certain common prejudice held against them by the middle class and the elites. Namely, the idea that poor people don't know how to spend money and would waste it on useless shopping. And at the same time, uh, this morality spending shows how poor women tend to assume unquestioningly the familiar role assigned them by their social environment. So their wife, their mothers, and they are supposed to act in a certain way. Generally speaking, however, the PBF contributes uh, to the empowerment of its participants, cities give them a certain level of independence and increases their power in the family. So they gain a, a bargain power in the family because now they have the money. So if the husband wants something, something he has to bargain with the woman. And it was interesting to see how in many cases, but of course this is more connected to the personal biography of the, of the woman in question, this leads to interesting uh, uh, result. Furthermore, also because of this uh, demand, this conditionality of uh, uh, attending school, many young girls who under normal circumstances would leave school very early, uh, stated they, they, not, they don't want to share the fate of their mothers. So they don't want to, marry, to go out of the school, marry and get children in a very young age. They'd rather stay at school and try to get to the university. So something is changing. Uh, of course, it, is a very, it will be a very long process, so we could just register the beginning of something uh, to say it with Adorno, a tendency, but we don't know where this tendency, whether this tendency will go on or not. The ninth point, uh, shame. Uh, 
Poverty provokes feeling of shame and low self-esteem almost everywhere, in every culture, unfortunately. Poor people are often considered and consider themselves to be responsible for their situation. Even when, objectively speaking, there is nothing they can do to circumvent the lack of education or the chronic unemployment resulting from external circumstances over which they have no control. So again, in the region we visited, uh, <coughs> poverty is not a matter of a temporary set of economic problems, but it is a structural problem. Uh, and this shows also how, why a, a CCT program like the PBF alone can solve the problem of poverty. You need all the other social programs. That why, that's why also the Brazilian government has, as I said, 59 social programs trying to ameliorate the situation. So while we interviewed the women, we had frequently the sensation that they, had a very, they, they were very strongly ashamed for, uh, for their situation. Uh, sometimes you can feel this shame uh, when they were ask, apologizing for the poverty of their houses, for not having proper chairs or tables. Sometimes this shame surfaces in a gesture like uh, a nervous gesture of the hand or an embarrassed expression in a shake of the body when certain topics were, uh, were aroused. Connected to this is the 10th point, the culture of resignation. Uh, so we frequently face what it is traditionally called the culture of resignation. Uh, the fact that they seem to be, to accept their situation as unavoidable, as a sort of natural destiny from which there is no escape. Uh, and this resignation goes hand in hand with the tendency to significantly lower their expectation. This is a phenomenon widely described in literature under the term of adaptive preference. Uh, so they tend to develop wishes that are quite easy to be uh, satisfied, connected to the most basic needs. Uh, this means that these persons are deprived not only of material means, but also of hope. So they are not poor only in the material sense, they are poor of hope. There is a lack of the possibility of dreaming and wishing for a different kind of family. So there is a psychological suffering. The PBF seems to be cracking the solid straight jacket of resignation that surrounds them like a cocoon. They know now that they can rely on the allowance every month, as long as there are no political changes, and that their children do not need to leave the school in order to work for helping the family. They put their hope in the children. So most, most of the women had no hope whatsoever about their own life, but they all hoped that their children could have a better life because they were able to go to school. So at least something is changing also in this sense of, the, of having a, a different uh, approach to their life. Finally, the last point, exclusion for citizenship. Poor are excluded from citizenship uh, both in a formal and material sense. The material sense refers to the lack of employment and regular income, and therefore for the lack of collective ties that go farther than the family or the neighborhood. So they don't feel like members of a society, mostly. The formal refers to the fact that many of them do not even have an identity card, which would make also impossible for them to get a PBF. So one of the process connected to the PBF was the fact that the government started registering these people, including them in the, in the formal uh, citizenship. Yeah. So just to finish this presentation and then open to the debate, to the debate um, I think that the most important effect of PBF that we registered was not one of its original goals. So it, the goals were material goals, helping these people to come out from severe poverty. And in a sense, it, they manage it. Uh, they came out of severe poverty. They are still in poverty, but not any longer in severe poverty as defined by the usual criteria of $1 per day or $2 per day. So the most important effect in our view was uh, uh, that of modifying somehow the personality of its beneficiaries, uh, or better, 
to put it mildly, uh, uh, the PBF created opportunities for individual freedom and for growing self-esteem, even if this phenomenon is still just incipient, and even if there is no mechanism leading automatically from receiving a regular monetary income to developing autonomy or self-esteem. But something at least is changing in this sense. So again, we cannot say that this is going to happen. Uh, we cannot foresee how this process will continue, will go on. But at least uh, we may hope that there is a tendency, a social tendency, destined to go on and possibly to modify Brazilian society and the lives of these persons. Thank you very much.